So I want to give you a little bit of background about why I became involved in research in wintertime. Um, my, my PhD work years ago was comparison of behaviors of aquatic insects in Appalachian streams with behaviors in the Rocky Mountains, basically the Beartooth Mountains above tree level, though so pretty high up on the tops of the mountain. Cold water habitat in summertime, covered over in snow in the winter. My first position was at the University of Kansas, and we got there in August of 1980. It was the first of 14 100 degree plus days, and I was not ready for that. So I said, okay, what am I going to do? I think I'll learn about winter dynamics of aquatic insects. <laughs> <laughs> and that started um, December 1980 and has continued to today. So, um, and it has been a very productive research area. Um, there are quite a few undescribed species of aquatic insects that are active in the winter time. And of course, if they're undescribed, we really don't know much about their biology. And their biology relates to trout in the sense of, you know, they serve as an overwintering food resource for the trout. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, what we found and focus mostly on um, true flies that are active in the winter time. Bruce showed you a couple of flies that actually are tied to mimic the flies, and I want to tell you a little bit about their biology. But in addition to the, to the true flies, there are stone flies. I know probably most of you have seen stone flies. That we started encountering them about two weeks ago in the streams that we're working in, and I'm sure the graduate students are finding them on snow today as we speak. And then there are a couple of caddis flies that are active in the winter time and um, uh, they're quite large and practice centrist being one of them and serve as um, you know the food resource also for trout.